Right. Okay. Anyway, I will uh, try my best to update you on the ITF 2020. As you may recall, we had uh, some delay and we extended uh, in terms of submission by the techniques and we actually extended the deadline by at least two months and that took some time to really uh, for the technique to send all their uh, input to the ITF 2020. Uh, you will see some materials that you already saw before in other presentations before this one. Uh, but uh, in any case, uh, I will show you a few new results. But these should be taken as really very preliminary. They are not final, so don't take them as final. Uh, now, uh, this is the what I will show you. I will start by showing the network and collocations. And I will talk about uh, uh, the new things that we will bring with the ITRF 2020 compared with the ITRF 2014. And uh, as I said, I will show some preliminary results and then talk about uh, next uh, step. Uh, this is the ITRF 2020 network. And uh, we have about 1,200 sites from the four techniques, GNSS, uh, DORES, SLR, and VLBI. And this is uh, the map showing the GNSS sites from the IGS contribution. We have about 1,100 sites with uh, about 93 collocation sites. So I am showing that because actually, as you know, uh, IGS contribution is fundamental as the other contributions. But in this case, IGS contribution will reinforce the link between the three other techniques by having collocations with a GNSS. As usual, you remember if we take VLBI and the SLR alone, for instance, we would not be able uh, to have a robust reference, a reference frame, a multi-technique reference frame, such as the ITRF. So we have a kind of uh, a new uh, things here, as uh, you see in, on this map. For instance, we have uh, more, more, uh, more site in, uh, in North America and even in Europe, but also in Australia. And we are happy to see this. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, the, these points in, in South America. Now, this is the map showing uh, the collocation sites. Of course, you cannot see the details, but we have a few more collocations compared with the ITF 2020. Uh, sorry, ITF 2014. And actually, I want also to mention that we have, uh, for some sites, multiple collocations operated at different epochs. And all what we received and all what is uh, usable, we will use that in the ITRF 2020. We, all what we received as uh, local surveys. Uh, OK. Now, the ITRF 2020, as I said in other presentation before this one, will be an augmented augmented parametric reference frame. It means that in addition to the regularized uh, positions, uh, as you see in this equation, you will have more, uh, in addition to that, uh, the post-seismic deformations parametric models as we did for the ITRF 2014. And these uh, are uh, now refined and we finished this step to determine these parametric models using a GNSS contribution because we have a more uh, dense uh, time series from GNSS and almost all VLBI and SLR sites are collocated with GNSS so we can actually uh, use these models for the time series from SLR and VLBI and also the rest. Uh, these concern uh, these parametric models, of course, concern all those sites which were, which are uh, were uh, impacted by major earthquakes. And here in this uh, in the left, I am showing, uh, for instance, uh, Tsukuba sites where uh, you have uh, this uh, famous, uh, I mean, uh, trajectory which is not linear after uh, the earthquake. Uh, so, in addition the, to the post-seismic deformation models, we will also provide 
the periodic signals, but mainly annual and semi-annual. After, for instance, estimating the draconitic signals in the IGS uh, time series, we estimate those and remove them. Then we stay with uh, the annual and semi-annual signals, and those will be provided expressed in the center of mass of SLR frame. We see some discrepancies in terms of annual signal between techniques at colocation site, but uh, we use uh, an appropriate uh, 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 weighting for that in terms of uh, connecting uh, uh, these uh, uh, annual signals between techniques at this colocation site. Okay, this is the, the example uh, which we have now today uh, from uh, the IGF 2020 input data. In the left panel, you will see Arequipa site, the famous sites where we have an earthquake happened in 2001. So after the earthquake, as you see, we have uh, uh, that uh, trajectory, which is of course not linear. In green, you have the linear velocity. Of course, uh, the ITF 2020 as for the ITF 2014 will provide the linear velocity, but we will also provide the model that you see in red uh, over the row time series. And these models should be used by the, the users to map their coordinate from the virtual uh, position to uh, the current or instantaneous position uh, using these models. Uh, we uh, see also that the model for uh, Tsukuba fits nicely also the uh, relaxation uh, period and that is also nice to see uh, but of course here you see the seasonal signals and once you remove that uh, these seasonal signals you remain with the residuals of these seasonal signals but uh, it's just to show you the example of these two sites. Now, how we map that to the SLR and VLBI, this is again Tsukuba in the left side from GNSS and then the right side in the right panel. Uh, you see the model that we fitted with the GNSS data actually ma match very well the VLBI time series. So we check uh, the consistency of these models uh, for SLR and VLBI time series for those sites with uh, uh, impacted by earthquakes. So this step is finalized and uh, we started, of course, now the analysis to combine uh, the multiple long-term solutions together, adding local tides and uh, velocity, uh, uh, equating velocities. So this is a preliminary velocity, a velocity field, which I would call ITR 2020 preliminary solution just to show you the density in some areas in North America, South America, and in Australia. Uh, yeah, okay, so this is just uh, an illustration of what we expect to get from the ITF 2020 as a preliminary velocity field. So uh, I guess that uh, uh, colleagues who are attending this meeting might need to know about the scale of ITF 2020. So this is the first time of the ITRF history where we have uh, four independent and competitive scale determination coming from the four techniques, DORES, GNSS, SLR, and VLBI. But you should, you should do, note that the IGS GNSS scale is based on the Z uh, phase center offset for Galileo satellite uh, using 3.7 years of Galileo data. So the IGS decided uh, to fix these PCOs uh, for Galileo satellites and adjust for uh, uh, GPS and GLONASS. Uh, and uh, they actually provided their contributions where the scale, the intrinsic scale is based on Galileo data over 3.7 uh, years of data. This is uh, one thing that you need to have in mind and also the fact that they fixed these values with no, uh, actually, uh, as constant parameters, with no assuming no drift in these parameters. Uh, the second point that you have to keep in mind that the ILRS SLR scale determination is now improved with enhanced handling of the range biases. 
and I will show you some results that I already showed in the uh, in the past. First of all, for Repro3, uh, IGS Repro3 origin component and the scale component, here with respect to ITRF 2014, we don't have yet the behavior with respect to ITRF 2020 preliminary solution. Uh, the analysis is still ongoing. And as you see here, uh, the perfect agreement in terms of origin component, but because the IGS Repro3 uh, time series were aligned to the ITRF 2014, so there is no new information in terms of the origin component from the IGS Repro3. In terms of the scale, we have an offset. We expected that offset, we know that, but there is a slight drift that we need to understand, and uh, we have to wait until we have the ITRF 2020 result to confirm or uh, to evaluate the, uh, I mean, the pertinence of this uh, scale drift. Now, this is for SLR in terms of uh, origin component and the scale. Uh, we notice a stability at the level of 0 0.1 millimeter uh, for the origin component compared with the ITRF 2014. So we can say that the uh, SLR origin will. Uh, be um, stabilized uh, with the ITRF 2020, uh, hopefully. Uh, now, in terms of the scale here, I put in blue uh, the new uh, time series coming from the ILRS contribution, and in red, what we had uh, with the ITRF 2014. So you see a clear offset, and that offset between the two is about 1 or 1.1. PBB, uh, which was expected uh, from earlier result presented by the ILRS uh, colleagues, that uh, the fact they estimated the range biases or enhanced model, uh, model uh, the modeling of uh, range bias bring uh, the scale uh, closer to the LBI by about one PBB. And this is a new result, and I am happy to see that because. Uh, I was claiming since uh, more than 15 years that there was a scale, scale offset between the two techniques. Now that offset will be reduced to, let's say, the noise level of the scale determination. And here, a new result. These are the relative scales uh, from uh, an ITRF 2020 preliminary solution. So again, don't take that as a final. Uh, but uh, this gives you an idea about what we expect to have uh, with the final ITRF 2020 solution. So in red, we have the full VLBI sessions, uh, where uh, the time series of the scales of the full sessions, but we will filter that and use uh, sessions with uh, more than six stations and uh, uh, let's say, uh, globally distributed as far as we can do that. Uh, in blue, you have the SLR data, uh, uh, scale time series. In green, the GNSS, the Repro3 solution, and in black, the Doris time series. So uh, it is not uh, obvious to see that uh, from the plot I am showing, but just to give you an idea, we have a better agreement between SLR and VLBI uh, more than with the uh, IGS or Doris. Now, uh, the last slide, the ITRF 2020 is, will be, as I said, an augmented uh, parametric reference frame. The annual and semi-annual signals will be provided to the users and expressed in the center of mass of a SLR frame. Uh, the ITRF 2020 input data is still ongoing, I mean the analysis. And the IGS operant scale offset or drift uh, with respect to ITR 2014 need to be understood. It's probably due, as I said before, to the assumption that the PCOs are constant with time. We are happy to see one PPB offset of SLR 2020 compared with the ITR 2014, and this brings uh, the SLR scale closer to VLBI and the offset. Uh, expected at the end uh, when the ITR 2020 will be published will be less than less I would say even less than 0 0.5 ppb which means three millimeter compared with the eight millimeter in ITR 2014 and this is a big result 
so for the next step, we will now, uh, we are starting to add the AUPs to the combination. Uh, this work is in progress and needs time because uh, we need to ensure the consistency between the frame and the AUPs. And uh, we have to take the necessary time to ensure that consistency. We need to finalize the weighting of all input data, not only the uh, technique solutions, but also the local ties and uh, uh, the constraint that uh, link the velocity to be the same for multiple uh, stations within uh, a colocation site. Uh, in uh, uh, when we finish the ITRF 2020, which will still be called ITRF 20, uh, preliminary solution, this will be submitted to the technique for evaluation when it is ready, and we will give the, uh, the time for the technique to evaluate that solution, and we hope uh, that the ITRF 20 release will be by the end of the 2021, which means uh, this, this year, the end of this year. Uh, this is the summary of the status of ITR 2020, and uh, I am happy to take questions if there are questions. Uh, thank you very much, Tihir. Uh, any questions to Tihir? Uh, oh, yeah, yes, please. Go ahead. I, I would have a question, so here. Um, yes. So, I as know. I understood, now the ITRF 2020 will have a scale bias compared to the recent ITRF 2014. Which the ITRF is 2014 is not recent, it has about six years old now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let, 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 let me uh, finish my question. How, do uh, we, how shall we explain it to people when, when we get questions? Where, what is the reason for this? Uh, bias. I, I, I think I gave the question, I gave the answer in my presentation that the uh, ILRS, yeah. and, and I want to thank the ILRS for their uh, effort to estimate the range biases. And the range biases, every, every geodesist know, uh, knows that uh, it has an impact on the scale, and that will be the answer. Yeah, yeah, that's clear, and it's, it's a technical answer, and it's the reason, of course. But nevertheless, there will be questions, what happened with the Earth? What happened with the frame, if there is such, such a scale bias? We are not perfect in geodesy. We have systematic errors. Uh, people should know that. Nothing is perfect, and the theory is the theory, and the, num uh, the numbers are the numbers. We have uncertainties, we have systematic errors, and every geodesist should know that. So that's simple to explain also. The Earth uh, is the Earth. We approximate the Earth. We estimate the extent of the Earth, uh, the, if you want uh, to say that in that way. But still, we have uncertainties in our technique. Otherwise, we will be perfect all the time. And if we fix the two without having that parameter as unknown, we will be cheating. It is the reality of what we have today in terms of geodetic infrastructure. And we are fighting, as you know, at different level to improve the situation for the future, for global geodesy. We are not perfect. Nobody is perfect. Again, the theory is the theory and the numerical application, the result, the numbers have uncertainties. The frame itself has uncertainties. I hope I answered the question. Still, I think we are in a kind of critical situation. Uh, yeah, well, I can tell you, I can tell you, uh, two days ago, I was invited on a TV uh, uh, show, <laughs> how to say, <laughs> about uh, the festival, science festival in France. And they asked me questions about uh, the reference frame, etc., what we do. And uh, the journalist, who is not at all expert, I explained to him that we have uncertainties. And I, he said, OK, and uh, how, how to improve the situation? I said, uh, I mean, nations, member states, uh, laboratories, etc., those who invest in geodesy should continue to invest. They have also to improve the technology. 
there is no way we have uncertainty and we have to be uh, use the language that can be easily understood by people that we have uncertainty. I am not sure, and I will give you the full uh, sentiment that I have. I am not sure that we have the perfect scale with the, this, uh, I mean, uncertainty reduced the offset between VLBI and SLR. I have no idea if that is really the truth or not. We have numbers, and we uh, publish these numbers. Geodesy is with numbers and with the uncertainties. If you if you don't give uh, uh, an error to your estimate, uh, then you you are not complete. Yes, for sure. But for instance, you know there was several decades ago there was the theory of Earth expansion, and which would also go along with a change of the scale. So um, there might be different people, various people who ask questions. What actually happened? And we have to explain it, as you said. We have to say it's our let's say how the data were processed, how the data was analyzed, and this is what we got in terms of numbers. Yeah, but uh, again, uh, uh, two days ago, when I explained uh, that to the journalist, I, I, I told him we have two techniques on which we believed up to now that they provide an information about uh, the extension of the Earth, the, time, the dimension of the Earth. And during 15 years, I was saying an offset between the two. And now that offset is reduced from 8 millimeter to 3 millimeter. He said, oh, perfect. Good. So he understood. OK, very good. <laughs> Thank you. I can give you the link to see me, but it is in French, <laughs> if <Good>. you want. <laughs> Thanks a lot. You are welcome, uh, Harald, as usual. Any other questions? Okay, you can write to me if you are shy to ask question now. Okay, uh, okay. thank you very much, Tihir, uh, for presentation. Uh, it is quite impressive. Know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the uh, improvement uh, in uh, scale of ITR 2020. Uh, so uh, this shows. Uh, 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 to ordinary people, uh, geodesy is still uh, in, improve, improving and uh, ITRF is still improving. So it's very good. Yeah. Uh, 